Welcome to City Cinema Tech, where the art and pleasure of the movies are the subject of serious discussion. I'm your host, Jerry Carlson, and I teach film studies at the City College of the City University of New York. Today, it's our pleasure to begin a five-week series dedicated to the cinema of Yosef Shaheen, the greatest of all Egyptian filmmakers. While Shaheen is not very well known in this country, he is a major star within European cinema as well as Mideastern cinema. His cinema go ranges over 40 years and has at least three styles, neo-realist, a kind of Fellini-esque expressionism, and also a kind of grander classical humanism. Today, we're going to be looking at one of his early masterpieces, Cairo Station from 1958. This is a film that might remind some of you of Fellini's La Strada because it's a story of the outsiders of society. It's a bit like Italian neorealism, but differs from it in some significant ways. We'll be talking about that and a set of other things about how Shaheen portrays Egyptian society after today's film. It's a pleasure to welcome to City Cinema Tech my colleague from the university, Professor Beth Barron, an expert on Egyptian society and history. Now, take a journey to Cairo Station. Welcome back to City Cinema Tech and welcome back to New York City after what I think is a very moving trip to Cairo Station in Egypt in 1958. There's a lot to talk about in this film. We've got 30 minutes to do so. It's a pleasure to welcome to City Cinema Tech uh, a colleague of mine from both the City College and the CUNY Graduate Center, uh, Professor uh, Beth Barron. Uh, Beth is the uh, co-director of the Center for Mideastern and Mideastern American Studies at the CUNY Graduate Center. Uh, as a professor of history, she teaches uh, there and at City College and is the author of two books on Egyptian social history with a particular focus on the history of Egyptian women. Welcome to City Cinema Tech, Beth. Thank you. Great. Listen, um, 1958 in Egypt is pretty distant to us in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the things we can do to sort of start unlocking this, this, mm -hmm. this film with a little bit more uh, subtlety is to recover uh, what an audience, an, mm -hmm. an Egyptian audience, would, would bring uh, to this film at that particular moment. Uh, could we talk just a, a minute or so about what the uh, political and social context, what's Egypt like politically and socially mm -hmm. in 1958? Okay, in 1958 is six years after the um, revolution which brought the, uh, by the young officers, which brought Nasser and his cohort uh, to power. Um, in the first few years after the revolution, uh, the, the young officers were consolidating their power, um, and uh, they, the Suez Canal crisis in 1956 probably uh, was the single event that really enhanced their prestige the most. So in 19, uh, by 1958, you've seen, you've had, uh, uh, you're six years into the revolution. Right. It's uh, sort of solidly, solidly on its feet. Uh, it's gained prestige. There's a program of um, Arab socialism, Arab nationalism is um, is uh, very much in the air. And there are big plans. Um, the, uh, the plans to industrialize with the power that would be uh, generated by the Aswan Dam project and so on. So there are big plans to to uh, to industrialize and move the co country forward economically. Okay, so this uh, th th I think this is one of the ways mm -hmm. in which we can we can enter the film under this theme of a country that's made a commitment mm -hmm. to a rapid mm -hmm. and massive program of modernization, mm -hmm. but, but, a, but a kind of modernization that's going to take, take place presumably on their own terms. Exactly, exactly. Uh, that the, uh, the state is very much will be behind this, controlling it. Um, it is a sort of state socialism that's, uh, that's uh, the engine for this. And, but it's also meant to be a modernization that's um, bringing along uh, peasants and workers, right. uh, and a, a revolution of social justice. So that it's not uh, uh, it, it, it's meant not, not meant to uh, this is not meant to be industrialization a la what, what one ha had in uh, England in the right. previous century that uh, was very harsh to workers and so on. Um, so the 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 revolution in the post 
revolutionary period had uh, all sorts of promises. And I think that that, the, that kind of optimism is perhaps what many of the viewers would have uh, brought with them. Right. And, and of course, we all know the best laid plans of mice and men mm -hmm. uh, oft times go, go, go astray. So let's talk about uh, uh, what's happening in terms of the place of the city of Cairo. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, uh, a, a key city in the mm -hmm. history of, of, of the globe. But what's happening in terms of the forces of modernity and uh, at, at this particular period mm -hmm. and uh, this m massive um, Egyptian, uh, for lack of a better phrase, peasantry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, what, what's, what's going on? Okay, well, one of the things clearly is that the, the city is growing, it's constantly growing. Right. Um, and people talk about urbanization, but there really was this process of peasants coming to the city uh, and transforming the city um, uh, and bringing their moors with them. One of the things that uh, about the film, um, that is sort of off stage or off screen are the, are the villages, and it's very interesting mm -hmm. because they're very they're, in a certain way they're very present. One never sees them, but um, you know he speaks of the village and his dreams to return uh, to the village uh, away from the noise and the trains and the the jungle. So the, the village remains a kind of um, space that's very. Um, uh, Romantic in a certain sense. Right. I mean, obviously, it had its own hardships and so on. But it's it, it there, this contrast becomes heightened during this period, um, and the trains themselves are the greatest symbol of modernity in absolutely. a certain way. Yeah, ab absolutely. Well, I want to step back from the mm -hmm. Egyptian notion of this just for mm -hmm. a second and say that one of the reasons I think that this film uh, rings mm -hmm. so true some some forty some odd years uh, some odd years later is because it really offers a, a kind of paradigmatic situation mm -hmm. that is repeated around the world, mind you, with significant mm -hmm. differences, but also with significant similarities. So when you talk about Mega cities mm -hmm. like Cairo, or you talk about um, uh, um, Tehran, but in our own hemisphere, you talk about Mexico City mm -hmm. or San or, or San Paulo. Uh, people can see in something like the Brazilian movie Central Station mm -hmm. uh, the same kind of pattern of people coming from the northeast, from peasant villages, coming into mm -hmm. the promises of, of of the city. So there's a way in which this. Uh, connects this film connects uh, both with a cinematic tradition of representing mm -hmm. this, but also with repeated social histories of mega cities that are both the magnet but also the trap mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. undereducated peasants who are coming for a promise but find a completely other world mm -hmm. and an other set of uh, uh, of experiences there. Um, I'm fascinated by I think your your. Excellent point of the fact that the the village is all over this film, although it's never mm -hmm. seen. Mm -hmm. It's the thing in the imagination of the characters that can never be mm -hmm. um, given up, uh, even though they've come there because they had to escape the village in some sense because of the lack of opportunities there. It it, it becomes, if you'll excuse if you'll excuse the phrase, the oasis of their imagination, mm -hmm. the promise of the return to this uh, mm -hmm. idealized uh, village mm -hmm. as, uh, as, as well. The home, the two cows, I mean, <laughs> oh, it's, it's all laid out. Yeah. Absolutely, and you bring out this. This uh, let's introduce, since it's one of the mm -hmm. things that you know a great deal about, but it's also mm -hmm. key to this film. Let's introduce the notion of the place of women mm -hmm. in these massive societal changes, and what is portrayed about that in the film. I mm -hmm. mean, starting in a certain sense with the obvious of the women selling the cold drinks mm -hmm. at the Cairo station. Mm -hmm. what, what does that tell us about Egyptian society? What, what, what's interesting in the film is that you actually have women of different backgrounds um, that are brought together, and you see them at certain moments. Although obviously the the real focus is on, on these um, uh, drink sellers. Right. Uh, first of all, they're selling what they're selling is not uh, sort of water or lemonade. I mean, they're actually selling uh, that, uh, soda right. uh, and soda bottles and so on. Um, they're the least protected of the workers in the station. I think that this is uh, one of the things when we if we talk more about the. Um, the subtext of unionization right. in, the, in the movie. Uh, the women really, these, these workers have the least protections. They are constantly on the run from the, from the police, um, uh, and yet they're not caught up in this union story right. um, so much. Um, but they are 
legitimate workers, uh, in, quite independent, uh, that you see the real bonds between the right. workers, the way they help one another. Um, and their work is legitimate before marriage. Um, this is one of the, the, the interesting things, that uh, these are all seem to be young women who are saving for their marriages. Right, right. And they, they are also young women who have followed the pattern of the young men mm -hmm. in, in that they have left their villages seeking their fortune and are finding a place to mm -hmm. fit in within the mm -hmm. urban culture. And I, I take it, but you correct me if, mm -hmm. if, if I'm wrong, uh, these roles are in, in a certain sense, you could say necessary but scandalous to a village culture. Your daughter goes off mm -hmm. to the city uh, and then uh, she's hanging around a train station. Mean, she, you know, it's, 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 it's employment, mm -hmm. this is not uh, in that way, but this is, uh, this is all part of modernization, mm -hmm. uh, vending an industrial mm -hmm. product like uh, the mm -hmm. soft drinks. But the, the, uh, the peasant women always worked, so in a, okay. in a certain sense there's, there isn't the sort of stigma that okay. it would be for women of other classes. I mean, that work in, in, in and of uh, itself okay. is quite legitimate, um, it, particularly in the stage before marriage. Uh, right. Uh, and, and that's that sort of work. Although the, the issues of control between uh, Numa and her fiance are very, very interesting uh, issues. Right, right. Well, also we have other, uh, you, mm -hmm. you're very happily pointed out, we mm -hmm. have other mm -hmm. um, portraits of women, I mean, although the, 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 the drink sellers are the, are mm -hmm. the focus of it. What, where does, uh, where does the, uh, the young girl who's, um, waiting for her lover to say, where does she fit in? She's this? an enigma to me. I mean, actually, in, in sort of social terms, I, I think she's probably more in your domain of the, the symbolic in a certain way, um, that, that there apparently are class issues with her waiting and so on for her um, boyfriend. And it's actually quite interesting that the, uh, that what one sees is that the working class women have, um, it is, have greater mobility and freedom to interact with the, with the right. men than um, than this girl right. does. Oh, well, what I take her, I should tell you, is that I mm. think that, that, that we get uh, three levels. We get the, the fullest portraiture of the working mm -hmm. class women. Then we get this woman who's individualized, who seems to be from some kind of at least petty bourgeois, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. Kyrene, uh, et, et cetera. But her boyfriend is clearly mm -hmm. from the yeah. upper echelons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there is a, there's the class struggle there mm -hmm. of one is modernized and uh, and, and urban, but that's still not good enough for the attachment to mm -hmm. a uh, traditional aristocratic or upper echelon family that is itself defined as cosmopolitan, going mm -hmm. to, 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 to Europe. So there's that, that struggle over mm -hmm. marrying beneath one or having mm -hmm. a relationship beneath one. Although, mm -hmm. you know, this is not a, um, uh, she seems more middle mm -hmm. class than working class, and clearly she's separated in terms of her manner, her style, mm -hmm. her clothing, her, her the uh, way in which there's even a shot looking mm -hmm. at her shoes because of the uh, you know modern Mediterranean European way mm -hmm. in which she is uh, she she is um, dressed. So as we move up the scale, mm -hmm. obviously access to the women becomes more and more fleeting, and we have the greatest access to the women who are there, and they seem to have the greatest freedom of social mm -hmm. interaction. Although the 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 uh, um that uh, group of uh, school um, oh, yes. or college kids who are dancing and so on together shows uh, uh, it's sort of a very different kind of a group. I think that actually with the um, with with this solitary woman uh, and the, her boyfriend and this the tensions in this uh, relationship, it's actually it's quite uh, ironic that he actually has the least freedom in right. a way, uh, the most money but oh, the least freedom to, to sort of pursue his heart. Whereas in the other groups, there there are. Um, uh, the the obstacles are are different, yeah. uh, but um, but there's more access. And then you have this this group in the middle that's uh, quite jovial, uh, yeah. uh, uh, enjoying itself. And that that's a very interesting scene when Hanuma engages with them. And uh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. We also have the comment made by the clerics, mm -hmm. um, a, a, a one uh, mm -hmm. a, a last prophetic of tensions mm -hmm. that would only increase mm -hmm. in Egyptian society of of the fact of who, who are all these mm -hmm. people who have modernized themselves in these ways. And we have the objection mm -hmm. um, just in the passing. I mean, these are characters who have a, you know, walk across the stage role mm -hmm. as, it, as it were, but reveals uh, the tensions within the society mm -hmm. between the larger social mm -hmm. objective of modernization and then what that means to uh, 
to some people and their traditional beliefs, mm -hmm. uh, belief systems. To, to set um, those clerics in context, and they may not have uh, meant to have been affiliated in any way with Muslim Brotherhood, but by this time, by 1958 or, or during this period, what one sees with the Egyptian government is that has cracked down okay. on those groups that, that are um, trying to push an Islamist. Uh, vision for Egyptian society. Right. Uh, and many of the, those Muslim brothers are in, um, uh, in prison during this right. period. So that those sorts of voices are uh, really muted. Okay. Uh, um, and it's the secular vision that the, the, the government Within the society promoting. as a whole that the government, mm -hmm. the government is promoting, which is very interesting given the fact that this is a, a, you know, a film that that voice is given its moment mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. part of the portraiture of mm -hmm. the film, whereas the official discourse of the mm -hmm. government may have muted those voices at that point, which is not to say that mm -hmm. by any means that Shaheen endorses those voices, mm -hmm. but uh, one of the things that has, um, in a manner of all, uh, I think, uh, innovative uh, artists of conscience has mm -hmm. always gotten him into trouble mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. his 40 years of uh, uh, filmmaking is that he always includes multiple voices mm -hmm. in his works to give the, the broadest portraiture of all the tensions within the society, and that always angers someone. Mm -hmm. There's always a couple mm -hmm. of voices in there, well, I like those other, but why mm -hmm. did you put those people mm -hmm. in there? And that really goes from this moment mm -hmm. early on in his filmmaking all the way to the film that we're going to be uh, screening as our last mm -hmm. film in this series, uh, uh, Destiny, uh, which is a kind of allegory about contemporary Egypt, but set in Andalusia mm -hmm. uh, in, in, during the occupation of the southern part of Spain. Uh, um, by, is, by Islam, and it's about the conflicts of the great philosopher Averroes mm. over uh, knowledge. Who has knowledge? Who has the? Who, what, what kinds of? What kinds of books? This is a film that has book burning mm -hmm. in it, um, because some people think certain knowledge should not um, mm -hmm. uh, exist. So you can see the seeds of much of Shaheen's uh, cinema mm -hmm. uh, here in this, uh, in this film, uh, thematically and uh, formally as well, because this is a, a man who was uh, trained as an actor at the Pasadena Playhouse uh, in the United States, uh, has an enormously sophisticated world film mm -hmm. culture, a knowledge of all different filmmaking styles. Uh, and uh, you, one can have the flavor of Italian neorealism in this film, but it's not really mm -hmm. only a neorealist film. He really uses a highly expressive camera movement, editing, framing, and lighting uh, that's much closer to certain, uh, one mm -hmm. could say, almost expressionist traditions of, um, of European cinema. So it's a very, very, uh, you know, interesting man cobbling together not only the or the multiple voices within mm -hmm. his own society uh, but also uh, forging a film style mm -hmm. out of multiple um, mm -hmm. sources uh, sources as well uh, let's turn to some more of this social uh, mm -hmm. thematics of the uh, uh, of the film we've talked about the women a bit what about the uh, the portrayal of the railway workers then we'll move on to the protagonist mm -hmm. with the uh, the railway workers we've already mentioned that the, the women workers are probably the um, the uh, most in need of protection right. as they're uh, probably very poorly paid and um, constantly on the run but what what we have is uh, kind of one of the themes running through the movies, the question of organizing the workers um, at, in the station. Uh, and this is, uh, this is actually, is, uh, 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 you, see, you see this character, uh, Abu Sura, who's um, fighting the, the old guard in the station in the right. old way of organizing the workers. And he's trying to convince uh, the fellow workers that there's a need for, um, for unionizing to protect in cases of illness, injury, and so on. Um, what's actually very curious in the film is that, uh, it's not so curious, I mean, it's because of the time period, that the person who comes in to actually help them unionize is a government worker. And this, again, reflects the, um, the developments after the revolution in which the trade union movement is basically taken over by the government. And there's a deal is struck. Right. Uh, that the, the government uh, will provide workers with certain guarantees and pay and uh, guaranteed to work and so on. Uh, but the workers give up the right to strike and they give up their independence essentially. Uh, the, the film doesn't bring that out so much, but 
it's uh, it's notable that the organizer that comes in is a government worker. Right, right. I, I have to um, uh, strike up yet another mm -hmm. parallel between what you're talking mm -hmm. about and uh, another uh, mega city, mm -hmm. which is uh, uh, Mexico City. Um, uh, there, um, uh, the reason I, I say that is because, as many people know, uh, Mexico was ruled by one party, mm -hmm. uh, the um, Partido Revolucionario Institucional, the uh, political, the uh, revolution, the institutional revolutionary party, which would seem to be a contradiction. Mm -hmm. How can you be revolutionary in that, in which parallel mm -hmm. events were taking place? That is, in which there was state mm -hmm. um, deals being being uh, being struck in exactly these same ways. Mm -hmm. So this is another one of these ways in which Shaheen, by being in a particular historical circumstance mm -hmm. and dealing very strongly with things that are Egyptian, Kyrene mm -hmm. specifically, nonetheless. Uh, is dealing with things that are going to be duplicated in mm -hmm. conditions mm -hmm. around um, around the world. Uh, just as a uh, as a quick little note, the great uh, Egyptian Nobel Prize winner for mm -hmm. literature, uh, Najib Mahfouz, is an extremely popular author in Latin America, mm -hmm. and in fact, there have been several very distinguished Mexican films made from these Egyptian mm -hmm. novels because they see the parallels mm -hmm. in situations so um, so so clearly. Uh, Midak Ali, mm -hmm. which is a Mexican film, is based upon a great Egyptian uh, a novel, novel, yeah, no yes. novel on that. So let's go back to this, mm -hmm. to the to the to the, to the labor um, mm -hmm. uh, issues. Um, where does we have these people who are the porters who are mm -hmm. organizing? Let's sort of shift over to what really is, if the film has a single most important character, it's actually um, the young man who's working for the news agent. Mm -hmm. uh, where does he fit into this uh, portraiture of what's going on in terms of labor and, and, um, and also um, the, the structure of society in mm -hmm. Cairo at this time? Canawi represents marginality, I yeah. think. I mean, he, he really he doesn't he really doesn't fit in. I right. mean, and that's exactly his problem. That he he has the dreams of you know every Egyptian uh, man, but he um, he can't fulfill them. Uh, and that that's that's not uh, I mean that's not just a physical condition. That's right. that's also an economic one. That he's very much on the um, lowest end as, as uh, uh, the seller of newspapers. Um, that he's, uh, he's, he's impoverished, um, lives in, in less than a shack, really. Um, right. But he still has the dreams. Right. Um, uh, uh, absolutely. And perhaps also, though, his, his loneliness can reflect um, aspects of modernity. Uh, right. I mean, that he's sort of really cut off from the village and any sorts of ties that might have kept him sane. Uh, that's, uh, mm -hmm. I think, that's a very important point. I, I should. Halt and uh, mm -hmm. just underline a, 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 a fact here mm -hmm. that uh, some people may not have caught in the mm -hmm. credits, and that is that this role is, is played by yeah. Joseph Shaheen mm -hmm. himself. Mm -hmm. uh, it is the director of the film playing this uh, character, and it really is an extraordinary performance mm -hmm. by all uh, you know by by all standards. I'm interested by this portrayal of his uh, progressive. Uh, mm -hmm. Mental, uh, mm -hmm. men mental, mental breakdown. Um, I, I take that to be one of the uh, films, uh, if uh, observations upon the effects of mm -hmm. this of this modern of this modernization. That that whatever the promises of the mm -hmm. official discourse are and of the programs, there will nonetheless be victims. Mm -hmm. there, there will be people left behind. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely the case, and that uh, he is he is one of them. Though one of the things that, that's interesting to me about the film is that uh, in say in a strict, if such thing exists, mm -hmm. in a strict neo-realist kind of uh, film, uh, the emphasis would really be on economics and social conditions, mm -hmm. and certainly we get a portraiture of that. Uh, here, I mean, when the news agent himself says, mm -hmm. "I found a shack mm -hmm. where he could live," and we see mm -hmm. what the conditions are. I mean, I think we we can virtually smell mm -hmm. what the place um, um, is like when people keep talking about the heat. But at the same time, there's a psychological portraiture mm -hmm. um, in in him. And uh, one of the most interesting things about it is the introduction 
of um, his sexual frustration mm -hmm. and of his er erotic life. What's going on in terms of the, in, in, in Egypt and, and also mm -hmm. in, the, in the film, in terms of portrayals of sexuality and what, the, what mm -hmm. effect the city has to do on that? It's actually, it's quite interesting because in many ways it's quite open. It, yes, it's, mo it's more open than it becomes in subsequent decades. Um, yes. So that that the sort of argument that the, the frustration comes only with the the veiling and so on is uh, or increased uh, veiling right. is uh, not necessarily borne out. Um, but there there are there are issues that are uh, dealt with here of the um, sexuality. One of the, the one of the most interesting scenes is the, the discussion of these, this feminist group that yeah. comes in, and they're, but they're organizing around the issue of forced marriages of right. young girls, um, which uh, obviously uh, has very much to do with the um, issues of sexuality. But th there, are, uh, there, there are also s some more uh, um, uh, other moving scenes that touch on this, and that's the power within relationships that you're yes. actually seeing. I mean, the, the feminists are talking basically in the abstract, right? Um, and that's done with a, a, a bit of humor, which I actually uh, I like. Um, but when one actually sees sort of the future of, of Abu uh, Surai's uh, relationship or marriage to Hanuma, with right. his beating of her, um, you, you see the, the hierarchy there. Uh, and how the, the their gender own, relations change with class in it, very very yeah, uh, yeah important yeah. ways. So you you see the, the hierarchy there that that while he's fighting uh, the patriarchal system within the union movement and, and is urging change there, some things never change. Uh, one has the, the sense or that uh, that that the um, the violence is acceptable within that relationship, uh, and that violence is obviously tied to issues of sexuality. It cannot be separated from it. Right. Right, right. Well, one of the things also mm -hmm. uh, about uh, Kaniwa mm -hmm. is that he has, in the city and in the urban culture, uh, he has access to highly eroticized images mm -hmm. that are part of modern culture. And one of the things that is so interesting in the film is, for example, when the um, news agent comes to his shack and sees mm -hmm. the obsessive use of, uh, of, of the images, mm -hmm. uh, that, that somehow this is... Uh, this is an access to modernity that's gone astray, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and it's gone astray in the most profound um, uh, psychological kind, of, uh, mm -hmm. psychological kind of way. Mm -hmm. uh, also, I'm interested by, by the, uh, the the chat among the women. There's the moment in which they throw all the water mm -hmm. over her, and that becomes in itself an uh, an, a, a, uh, an eroticized scene. I think um, when she comes back into the uh, into her. In, mm -hmm. Into her private, uh, private, private space. Uh, that's you know fairly bold imagery mm -hmm. of 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 her drenched uh, mm -hmm. with uh, with the water, and I think very very open um, uh, in its portrayal of sexuality at this mm -hmm. uh, at, at this time. Good. Um, just one last mm -hmm. last thing. What if you had to say just in a sentence or so, what you think makes this film important? What would it be? It's actually, I think, the combination of capturing the, the, the time and the place, as well as having universal values that, that can touch all of us. Great. Super. If you'd like to know more about the series about Joseph Chahin or about City Cinematheque, drop us a line. The best way to do so is by looking at our website. That's at www.cuny.tv. Then click on City Cinematheque. Again, our web address is www.cuny.tv. Beth, thanks for joining Thank us you. here. Uh, it's a, a rich film in its social portraiture, in its artistry. I'm sure we could talk mm -hmm. uh, at length about many, many other aspects of it. Hope you come back to City Cinematheque some other time. Thank you. Great. And I hope that you join us again as we do our best to explore the archives of film history. Thanks for joining us today. I hope you tune in again. Bye-bye.